Good morning. Good morning. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Matthew Swenson. And I'm another one of the pastor's kids that has flown away from college, um, flown away from the nest off the college. For those of you who do know me, I'm guessing you're probably thinking, wow, he grew a foot. <laughs> Either way, you are my brother or sister in Christ, and if you are a part of the Ascension congregation, you are part of the congregation family that played a major role in shaping who I am today. I'll be a junior this fall at Gustavus Adolphus College in St. Peter, Minnesota. Gustavus is a liberal, liberal arts uh, ELCA college, and I've had the time of my life there these past few years. I was fortunate enough to find a solid faith community there early on, something that it seems is increasingly rare on college campuses today. Your mic is not on. Is it? Just for this moment. Switch. Hello. It's <laughs> very so yeah, awesome faith community. Um, I have been challenged there, and in result, have grown tremendous, tremendously in various ways: academically, spiritually, musically, socially, and as a leader. So now that you know a little bit about me, you're probably wondering why I'm up here preaching to you right now. And one part of me is wondering the same thing. <laughs> there wasn't a youth trip or a graduation. But I'm here to give a testimony to part of our ELCA ministry that is often overlooked, our outdoor ministries. The ELCA website states that outdoor ministries encourage spiritual growth for the whole person by providing encounter with scripture, experience and care for the environment, staff witness, and opportunities for worship, recreation, and relationship development through intentional Christian community. There are approximately 145 ELCA outdoor ministry programs in the United States and Puerto Rico. This summer I had the honor and privilege to work as a counselor at one of these 145 ELCA outdoor ministry programs, a summer camp called Christicon. Similar to the Crossways camps I grew up attending, maybe some of you have attended, Christicon is extremely intentional about putting Christ at the center of everything it does. However, I think Christicon is about a million times more epic because it's smack dab on the side of a mountain in Montana, about 20 miles north of Yellowstone, and is completely surrounded by uh, other amazing mountains. Christicon's mission and vision embodies every part of the selection from the ELCA website. Christicon encourages spiritual growth for the whole person by providing encounter with scripture experience and care of the environment, staff witness, and opportunities for worship, recreation, and relationship development through intentional Christian community. Hearing this loaded sentence is extremely powerful for me now, because while it sounds like an unrealistic goal, it really became a reality for me this summer. Every week this summer as a counselor, I would get a different cabin of boys ranging from 5th grade to 12th grade. It was such a blessing to see my campers of all ages grow close to God as we worshiped together, camped together, did Bible studies together, hiked together, and had fun together as a community, the body of Christ. As the weeks went on, I started to realize the profound impact that the life in the Christ-centered community was also having on me. The deep friendships, deep personal growth, deep conversations, and overall fun that occurred in this environment were, like un were, like un un were unlike anything I've ever experienced in this short amount of time. I truly felt connected to the body of Christ. It's similar to the faith high I'm sure many of the youth here have experienced on youth mission trips, except for its entire summer instead of only a week. The daily worship services taught me a completely different perspective on worship. It's so easy to fall into the regular motions mindlessly every Sunday morning without uh, really connecting with God. But this summer taught me that worship is a conversation with God. Worship is a conversation with God. 
God speaks to us through the scripture and the sermon, and we respond through our prayers and through our song. Through the practice of daily, camp-wide, personal, quiet time, I also learned the value of daily silence to simply be alone with the Lord. It is hard to do in daily life, but even as short as 10 minutes can be extremely centering and powerful. It is especially amazing to experience quiet time in the mountains with the incredible scenery. It's pretty much impossible to be surrounded by the breathtaking mountains without feeling God's presence. I also had the opportunity to peak five mountains while I worked at Chris Khan this summer. Each one was uniquely, like, totally amazing, but it was almost unreal because I kept having to remind myself that I was getting paid to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware that your theme for this summer was about going green with God, and I have a few ideas from Chris Khan that might shed a new light on the subject. Our theme this summer was our senses. Seeing, smelling, touching, tasting, and hearing. Exploring these senses throughout the scripture and being aware of my senses in daily life has definitely aided in my growth and faith this summer. It was incredible to explore all the ways we sense God around us and how this affects our concept of who God is. The ways we sense God are the ways we taste, smell, hear, see, and feel God's presence in our lives. Thus, we can sense God in church, in the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion, in Scripture, in other people around us, and lastly, in His glorious creation, the natural world around us. This is where the Go Green with God theme comes into play. I found that one crucial step in enjoying the wilderness and in caring for it is how we originally perceive it. For example, if we see a sunset over a mountain, and only think of how cool it looks. It's going to be a sweet at first, but it won't have any lasting, meaningful effects. But if we sense God's glory in the beauty of a sunset, or in any of his creation, it energizes us to praise God and inspires us to care for his creation. It was definitely easier to sense God this way in the mountains, but I think it's something we can apply to everyday life. Even if it isn't a beautiful horizon, we can apply it in different ways. If we sense God working in the people around us, it will be a lot easier to see past their faults and love them as God does. Another image I enjoyed playing around with this summer, in addition to how we sense God, is how God senses us. I would like to tell you a story I used a lot this summer for the sense of sight about how God sees us. When I was about four, my brother and I were playing in our backyard when all of a sudden it started to rain. And by rain, I mean like hardcore downpour. We lived in a safe neighborhood, and my brother was watching me, so at the time, my mom was inside. The rain kept coming and coming. If you know anything about myself or my brother, or just about little children in general, it wasn't long until we were completely covered in mud. Let me tell you, it was pretty wild, like head-to-toe slime. However, it wasn't long until we got a little cold, so... Nathan and I ran back into the house, completely covered in mud. Nathan, being a little older than I was, um, realized that he was covered in mud, so he should probably stop in the mud room. However, I was completely oblivious to the fact that I was covered in mud, and thus I excitedly rushed inside through our rooms, trying to find my mom. <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't too long until I found her. As I ran up, I screamed, hi, mommy. <laughs> Looking back on it, I'm surprised she didn't blow up at me. But she knew that I wasn't aware of the fact that what I was doing was wrong. Therefore, she graciously instructed me that the mud didn't belong in the house. <laughs> but like both my parents did whenever I messed up, she made it clear that despite what I did, she would still love me just the same. Then she proceeded to take me to the tub and wash the mud clean from my clothes and body. As I reflect on this story about how my mom stood there and looked at me as a muddy little kid, I see a lot of similarities with the way God sees us. God sees us exactly how we are, broken, sinful, completely covered in mud. 
However, this is only part, part of the picture. If this was the whole picture, it would be extremely depressing. Because as the Romans passage says, there is no one who is sinless. Everyone is muddy. However, there is hope. As the reading from Isaiah says, God has claimed each and every one of us. He loves us, he knows each of our names, and he has a promise for each and every one of us. God sees us as broken and muddy, but also as his own beloved children. And there's nothing we can do to deserve it. Just like me after that rainstorm, when we run up to God our Father, all covered in the mud of our sins, God doesn't blow up at us. With more grace than any human parent could have, God understands human nature. We screw up, and though he challenges us to try to live without messing up, he knows we still will. Also, like the story, we are usually completely unaware of the majority of our sins. We can't even see all of our mud. But first, Peter tells us that Jesus' sacrifice gives believers hope. All who believe in him are freed from their sin. God washes away the mud, our sin, but that mud just doesn't disappear. Jesus took on the mud of all believers, everywhere, of all time. He is the ultimate soap. So always remember, because of Jesus Christ, we can be clean and holy in God's eyes. This was a little bit about my experiences at Christicon, an ELCA camp, but there are tons more opportunities in the ELCA's outdoor ministries for experiences similar to mine. Amazing opportunities for kids, for teenagers, and even for adults. Remember that exploring our senses and growing an awareness of our sense, senses can revive and strengthen our relationship with God and open our eyes to the glory of His creation and presence all around us and within each other. Amen.